<laughs> smell the wood fire, make tea, and very peaceful. Inside her teepee is where Kathy Pope finds solace. It's what she was seeking in 2018 when she traveled over 600 kilometers to honor people buried in an unmarked grave. It was something I'll never forget. The traditional Dene ceremony left a lasting impression on Pope. Many of the dead were residential school students. Three were her relatives. I was very happy and very sad, all so mixed emotions, so very much. The graves are here in Fort Providence, near the site of the Sacred Heart Residential School. It operated between 1867 and 1960. Today, this monument memorializes around 300 people buried here, including 161 children brought to the school from up and down the Mackenzie River Valley. A sacred area for, for our family, for our community here in Fort Providence. Albert Lafferty says people in Fort Providence talked about the unmarked graves for years. His Denny ancestors are buried here too. In the early 90s, Lafferty led a push to ensure the old burial ground would never be developed. They brought in ground penetrating equipment to search for remains. All of the, uh, our ancestors and all the uh, children who are buried here. So it's a very special and uh, sacred place for us. Laverty worked with the Roman Catholic Diocese of Mackenzie, Fort Smith in Yellowknife to find out who they were. And his research also confirmed what the community had already feared, that in 1948, the church plowed over the burial ground, but not before relocating eight missionaries to the community's current cemetery. Lafferty says then the church turned the site into a potato field. Yes, it is uh, unsettling as to why that, that was necessary, but we don't have the precise answers for that. Uh, from Fort Good Hope, I was 12 years old. In 1994, the efforts of Lafferty and others paid off, and a monument was erected to honour the people buried here. And getting the names and the monument project itself uh, offers some sense of closure. There's still a lot more work to be done for, for survivors and descendants. Sam Gargan is a former Grand Chief of the Detcho First Nations. He also went to residential school. I spent just about one winter with my parents. But as soon as the church found out where I was, they came to where I was and, and they grabbed me with the RCMP. Gargan says the monument is only a start. In order for our people of my generation and even our children's generation to heal and that process to begin, you have to hear an apology from the church and from the RCMP. But for Kathy Pope, the monument has been an important part of her healing journey. I never ever used that word closure, so, you know, it give me peace of mind. Pope plans to make the trip back to Fort Providence. So they feel they're not forgotten. And Juanita Taylor joins us from Yellowknife. Juanita, we know there have been calls from Indigenous groups across the country for a papal apology for the Catholic Church's role in residential schools. So what's happening in the Northwest Territories? Well, Ian, recently an apology was made by Bishop John Hansen of the Mackenzie Fort Smith Roman Catholic Diocese in Yellowknife. But it's not clear if that apology has been accepted by the people of the Northwest Territories. Now, people we've spoken to in several communities say they want the Pope to apologize. And in fact, leaders from the Métis National Council, the Assembly of First Nations and Inuit Tapari Kanatami will be traveling to Rome to ask for that apology in person. Ian? All right, Juanita, thank you.